In a previous tutorial, we had talked about using 2D arrays to construct tile-based terrains, and we had created a class called Room that you can see here. Now we left off with the method called LoadRoom that begins on line 31, and what I want you to notice is on line 40, you can see that we passed each tile as we created it this value of counter. Now if I were to run this, you can see that we get this kind of heterogeneous disjoint look to our terrain, so this is not normally how things are done. So in this tutorial, what we're going to do is talk about loading that information from file as opposed to the way that we've done it here. So to begin with, what we're going to do is take a look at the file structure that we get whenever we create a new project. And if I dive inside of this, you should recognize some of these folders, especially the asset folder, because we created that one. But what I want you to notice is this bin directory, and then there's a debug directory, and then we have one last directory here, and then we get down to these four directories. And you should recognize the application directory. We've been working with that one. But we also have two other ones that I want you to notice. There's a documents directory and also a temp directory. Now we have read and write access to documents and temp, but you have to understand that whatever we put in temp is going to be wiped out in between every time we run the application. But whatever we put inside of documents is going to be quote unquote permanent. So I'm going to open this up and you can see that we don't have anything there yet. Um, over here in the rooms directory that I've created, we have a whole bunch of files that represent rooms. In fact, what I'll do is I'll open up 00, zero here, and you can see that it's just a whole bunch of comma-separated values. So I'll shut that down, and you can see there's quite a few files that we have here. I'll take all of these text files and copy them and paste them into this documents directory. Okay, now let's come back over here to the IDE. Now one thing to remember is because we did that at the file system level, I don't have to import any of that into the project space. All right, so let's go ahead and modify the code so that we can read from files. And the first thing that we'll probably want to do is to construct a file name. So what I'll say is string file name gets, and we're going to pass it that documents directory, okay, and actually a slash. And then we need to construct a room. If you look back at the naming scheme, I'll pull that up one more time. If you look back at the naming scheme, you can see that it's 0, 0, 0, 1, all the way through. These are really the room numbers, all the way through till 15 underscore 7. So it's almost like we have an x and a y coordinate here for our rooms. So let's use that same idea. In fact, what we'll do is we'll pass it in here. We'll say int room x and int room y. And then I'll use that in constructing the file name. I'll say room x plus an underscore let's try underscore, plus room y, plus dot text. So you can see, depending on the room that we're in, the name of the room that we're going to load is going to be dependent on the coordinates of the player. And these are room coordinates, not coordinates on the screen. Okay, now that we have the file name, we need to open that file. So I'll use a stream reader. And notice here that it doesn't recognize what a stream reader is. So what I'll do is I'll take that back and come up here at the top and say using system.io and then when I come back down here you can see that it recognizes a stream reader okay so we'll just call this one SR gets a new stream reader passing it the file name alright now right after this is a good time to start using our exceptions and if you haven't seen exceptions yet that's okay we'll talk about those later so let's take all of this code here and tab it over because it is inside this try block and then on the inside of this try block, watch what we're going to do. First of all, we don't need this counter anymore. We can ditch that concept. And what I'll do instead is to create a string that I'm going to call data line. And I'll initially set it to be empty, but this is going to represent what we're reading from the file. We're going to read line by line and then parse it based off of those commas. So on the inside of the inner loop, or I'm sorry, the outer loop, what I'll do is say that data line gets sr.readline. So at this point, I've read one line from that file, and then the next part's a little bit tricky. I'm going to say string array, and we'll call these things something like tokens, gets sr, or I'm sorry, data line dot split. Now what's happening here is, if you remember back inside that file, all of the data, all of those numbers were separated by commas. Now what's happening here is that we're splitting that string apart based off of the comma and taking each of those numbers and putting them into this string array called tokens. Now it may seem weird me saying putting numbers into a string array, but what's going to end up happening is we're going to convert those strings back into numbers. So to show you what I'm talking about, we'll come down here 
And notice that I can't pass tokens of x, right? We're inside of this x loop right here. Uh, I can't pass that because it's expecting an int and these guys are all strings. So what I'm going to do is to convert that string into an int using int32.parse and putting an extra set of parentheses here. And we should be good to go. Actually, we can remove this counter line on line 49. And that looks good to me. So the last change that we would need to do is in the way that we call load room, you can see here on line 28, this was the old way where we didn't pass any information, but now it expects a room X and a room Y. So I'll pass 00, zero and I'll run it. And at this point, you can see that we get something that's actually pulled from file, and it looks a heck of a lot better than what we had before. And to show you that this really does work, let's try something else. In this case, let's say 7 over 0 down. And you can see that we have the beginning of the game. All right, good. Let me shut that down. So that's it for now. Hopefully you can see that reading from files is not very hard. It only takes a couple of lines of code, but it also adds a new dimension to our code and provides us with a more powerful way to create these rooms.